Hey guys, Micah here. This is going to be the 12th video in the iPhone game programming series. Uh, in this video, we are going to cover the implementation of the handle cleanup method along with the creation of a basic points label. So for the handle cleanup method, we're going to do about the same thing we did in the handle generation method. <coughs> Except instead of generating a new node, we're actually just going to remove that node um, from the scene entirely. So. We'll do world enumerate child node with nodes with name. The first thing we're going to want to get rid of is going to be the ground node. Any ground node that exits on the left side of the screen after we have passed it. So we're going to make this if statement saying if the node.position.x. So if the selected ground node um, nodes position.x is less than the hero.position.x minus self dot frame dot size dot width over two minus node dot frame dot size dot width over two. So what this gets is it starts the at the hero's position in the center of the screen. It subtracts half of the screen size. So now you are at the left side of the screen, except because um, the central point is kind of on the center of that ground node, half of the ground node is still within the scene. Um, so we have to subtract the node.frame.size.width over 2, which gets us to the point that's exactly where the ground exits the scene. So this will be called exactly when it exits, and what we want is we just want to remove it. So we'll do node remove from parent. Um, every single node has this method. It just uh, removes it from the parent node and essentially removes it from the scene because there's no other reference to it right now. So with that, we're going to do the same thing with the obstacles. So we're going to do enumerate child node, child nodes with name obstacle canceled. Um, if you remember up here, we changed the name of the obstacles that have already passed the hero to obstacle canceled, just so they aren't enumerated again in the handle generation method. And we're essentially going to do the same exact thing. So we'll do if node.position.x so less than hero.position.x minus self.frame.size.width over 2 minus the obstacles, uh, half of the obstacles width. Um, and that will get us the same deal with the obstacles that are passing by. So that is it for the handle cleanup method. You don't actually have to implement this um, in this game. You wouldn't have to just because an iPhone's processing power is so high now that. Um, Nodes like this are almost negligible for the calculations to the iPhone. But when you get into bigger games where you're um, generating, say, like tens or hundreds of little particles, you kind of always want to do this cleanup method just so your processor doesn't get bogged down. So now we are going to move on to the points label. We're going to do Command N. It's going to be a new class. Ignore that. And <laughs> with the Objective-C class, we're going to call it uh, ML points label. It's going to be an SK label node. This is a new node we're going to be working with. Essentially, what it does is it has a text property and a font property. So you can um, you can just you can write in text, and it makes it really simple uh, for text generation in a sprite kit game. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the factory method. As always, we're going to call it points label with font named and a string font name. Now anytime you generate, uh, anytime you create an SK label node, you need to specify the actual font uh, that you want to create it with. So that's why I'm doing this with font name chunk. Um, yeah, that's just the explanation for that. So we'll do ML points label, points label equals my points label label node with font name. So this is the SK sprite node factory method uh, for creating just an SK label node. Because the ML points label is uh, inheriting from the SK label node class, it can do this. So we want to do that, and we just want to do it the font name that we pass in. So now we have a basic SK label node. So we can do points label text. Every SK label node has a text property. Um, this is what I was talking about when we were actually creating a class. And we're just going to call that zero, and then we're going to return the points label. All we want right now is we want to be able to draw the 
ML points label in our scene just so we can get it running and good to go. And make sure you put this in the header file as well so it can be accessed outside the class. So we're going to go into the myScene method now and we are going to create an instance of this class we just wrote. So we are going to first import it, ML points label, we'll do ML we will do ML points label, points label equals ML points label, a little repetitive, um, like I was talking about with Objective C. Uh, ML points label, uh, points label with font names. Let's just do Helvetica for now. That's a good, um, a good go-to font for pretty much everything. So we'll do, we'll do self add child points label. So right now, as of now, it's going to be drawn in the center of the screen. So maybe we actually want to set this guy's position property so that he's at the center X coordinate, but he's like about 100 points higher in the Y direction. So we're going to run this and there you go. You can see that the points label is now drawn on the screen and we can now start on the implementation of the ML points label so that it actually increments itself um, when it moves over these blocks. So we'll go back into the ML points label. We are going to actually add a property in the header file um, that is going to be the number that is, that is associated with this ML points label. So it will be property int number. And the reason we do this, um, and we don't just like set the text to different numbers, is working with an integer is way easier than working with an NS string like this right here. Um, that way you don't have to keep converting between NS string and integer to actually do, oper do operations on it and increment its value. So that number property just makes things easier for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to do points label dot number equals zero. And now we are going to create a method called increment. And increment, all, all, it's gonna, all, it's, all that it's going to do is uh, it's going to increase the points labels number by one and change the text so that it shows that. So to do this, we're going to do points label dot number plus plus. And then we're going to change the text of the points label to equal a really useful method. It's going to be an NS string method, string with formats uh, percentage sign i points label dot number. So this string with format method, um, if you have not worked with it before, right here in this argument, this is where um, the actual number is going to be written in. This percentage i sign indicates that you're going to be putting an integer value in the second argument and that it wants you to convert that int integer value into a string. Um, if you don't completely understand the string of format method, I would highly suggest you maybe look that up in Apple's API. You can access that through the help up here at the top and go into documentation and API reference. It's an extremely useful method for converting between strings and integer values. And it's giving me an error here because instead of points label, I actually have to put self because um, we're, we're accessing this method um, we're actually accessing this class when we call the increment method and not um, not the class we created in the factory method right here. So change that as well and our increment method should be good to go. We're going to go back into the header file um, and we're going to add this increment method in. So in the next tutorial we will, we will actually get the method incrementing in our scene um, now that we have the basic setup for the points label done, thank you for watching guys as always and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.